I think we are witnessing the arrival of the most unlikely hero imaginable. After League's lore got frozen, everyone either left because the excitement vanished, or people patiently waited to see who's going to pick up the story next. At first, the bets were on Riot Forge, which uh, didn't turn out that well. We also had some hopes for Path of Champions in Legends of Runeterra to have some deeper lore. And now there is some curiosity about the potential story of 2XKO. And that's all while we are riding copium of potential PvE in League one day. But while all of this was happening, in the background, Wild Rift was cooking. And oh boy, were they cooking well. Because all of this cooking is centered around League's canon lore. It all started about two months ago, after it was announced that all the games will now be part of the same canonical universe, and we got a short cinematic for Syndra, which was only 40 seconds long, but it was technically a part of Syndra's story. This was then followed by some new champions in Wild Rift who were updated according to their lore. For example, Talon now looked a lot closer to his appearance in the Katarina comic. And we even got a high-res version of Kindred. Because why shouldn't you ride the hype of the cinematic? But again, while this was happening, Wild Rift was also cooking some things on the gameplay front. Besides its own version of Arena. They also had a game mode where you can swap between champions in the middle of the game which means that you were essentially playing Genshin in League of Legends. And recently they toyed with the double cast game mode, which means that every single ability had two charges. Not a big change on paper, but it's a big change on the gameplay. It was a more controlled version of Earth. So even here, Wild Rift was not afraid to experiment. And eventually all of this led into their biggest reveal yet. The patch 5.1, which would be based on League's canon lore. And yes, it is as awesome as it sounds. Which also means that League PC players will be mad because this is exactly what we wanted to see. Sadly, that includes me. So let's dive right in. It all starts with David making a comeback to tell us about the Black Mist. And he confirmed that Wild Rift is indeed doubling down on the lore of League of Legends. Something no other game, perhaps besides Legends of Runeterra, has done before. And from day one of patch 5.1, their goal is to immerse you into the world. With the center scene of everything being the Shadow Isles. Now at this point I understand if you are getting some flashbacks from the Sentinels of Light. But don't worry, things will get incredibly cool in just a moment. But yes, once again, the focus of the story is the Ruination. But it will be the cooler version of it. And because Wild Rift got a lot more breathing room here around the stories, they mentioned that they are also diving into some parts of the stories that were not told before. Which is where we also got some future direction on where Wild Rift is going. See, in the past, whenever Wild Rift got an event, it was a one-shot. It was a short event that was focusing on Rengar and Kha'Zix, or maybe Samira and Sion, most of which wasn't really canon. But now, not only will they be diving specifically into canon stories, but they plan for each event to build off of the last one. Here, they might be suggesting that the stories will link between each other, kinda like what League used to do with the releases of Champions, but here they might be also suggesting that gameplay-wise they will just keep giving us more things, some of which will be permanent features. So we'll have to wait and see what actually happens there. And yes, David confirmed that outside of just events and the lore, everything else in 5.1 is also based around the Ruination. So next, Paul comes out to talk about the new champions first. And once again he confirmed that indeed the story of the Ruination is being incorporated into Wild Rift. Of course, at this point, the story was told through three different sources. The in-game bios, that mainly being Callista and Viego. The Ruined King game, which is also about Viego. But also the Ruination book, which is a titanic tale of Camavor and the Blessed Isles. And now, Wild Rift decided to join in. With a whole new perspective on the story of the Ruination, which will be told through three different acts. 
with each act releasing a new champion into Wild Rift that is related to those events. And of course, because technically the entire story of the Ruination is carried on Kalista's shoulders, she will be the first one to arrive. And there Paul confirmed that throughout the first act we will learn about how Kalista is related to the story of the Blessed Isles. Which is where you might start wondering, how is Wild Rift gonna do that? Is it gonna be just comics, just like what we've had before? You just wait. Because next, during Act 2, we are getting Viego, who honestly looks incredible in his high definition form. And finally, in Act 3, we are getting none other than Maokai, a spirit that played a decently big role during these events in the background, with his biggest role perhaps being in the Ruined King game. And again, his HD model is awesome. But it's not just the HD model that is new, his lower resolution model, which is in-game, is new as well. And I will admit, the magical runes look kinda cool. But you know, new champions are not exactly enough to really immerse me in the lore of League of Legends. So when it comes to gameplay, Wild Rift is going wild. First of all, the entire base app will have some UI improvements to really make you feel like you are on the Blessed Isles. They hint at the immersion, making us feel like we are on the Daggerhawk sailing towards the Blessed Isles, but they don't really show much, so we'll have to wait and see. Next, they also show us some missions with a separate progression, which also hints at interactive comics being part of this, similar to what we have seen during the Sentinels of Light. And yes, here David is totally trying to avoid talking about the big feature, that's why we are still getting all of these teasers. So next he confirms that the base Summoner's Rift is also getting some updates, such as the Black Mist being all around us now. They are also changing their items and they are splitting them into Radiant items and Shadow items, which may give you some TFT PTSD, as it should, because the Radiant items are the safe ones, but the Shadow items are more powerful, but also more dangerous towards you. And all of these will be active in all game modes, including Ranked. And finally we go back to Paul, who confirms the one thing that is the center of everything that's happening here. A whole new lore-based game mode. It is a wave defense mode called Final Stand. In other words, Wild Rift is getting story-based PvE. Yes, you can panic now. I mean, this is exactly what we wanted to see in League. Story-based campaigns that would tell you the story of the champions. And here, things are truly getting wild. So, as you can see, the location is indeed the Blessed Isles, where we are fighting off the Knights of the Iron Order, alongside, whom I assume to be, Ledros. Because all of this is retelling Callista's final battle, which you may remember from the book. Which also means that yes, you get to play as human Callista, because she is alive here. So now I wonder, if Viego and Maokai get released after that, how will that tie into the gameplay? Now after this we also get some teasers for the meta systems. You can see that everything is themed around the Blessed Isles, which should include also some of the tiny for fun events, such as Guess the Champion. And while doing these events, apparently you will unlock different story beats that will be told through different kinds of media. So some of them may be comics, others might be journals, and perhaps there might be some tiny cinematics. After which we actually get a teaser for each of these story snippets. And based on these, we can assume that Wild Rift will retell the story of the Ruination book. Because here we can see some iconic characters such as Vanix, our Vastayan sailor friend, and yes, even Soraka, who a lot of people may not know, played a decent role in the book. But you can see that the story also goes back to Thresh's story in the vaults, and it even goes to the moments of the betrayal, which can be both the betrayal from Thresh and, depending on your perspective, Callista or Viego. The cool thing is that once you unlock these story beats, they should be saved in your collection. And I only hope it is gonna be permanent. If not, well, everyone is gonna dump it out on the internet for free anyway. But that's kinda it for the main part. So long story short, a lot of people will be mad now. Which is good, because maybe if this proves to be a success, League will realize this is what we wanna see. 
Although it is still Wild Rift and a lot of people don't want to play on their phones, so the motivation is still gonna be low. But who knows, maybe a lot of new Wild Rift players will rise because of this. But yeah, since we are covering the news of Wild Rift, we might as well just talk about everything else in this patch. So some champions are getting reworks, for example, Misfortune has a new passive, Riven's ultimate now resets on kill, and Jax's ultimate is a lot closer to what we have in League PC. The Algove is getting a new objective in Wild Rift, if you stand on it you can summon a new Scorpion friend, and of course the Ranked Season and the Pass have new rewards too. Season 13 of Ranked will give you a new skin for Braum, which seems to be themed around the Blessed Isles. That's why he looks similar to Commander Kalista, with the pass giving us Food Spirits Fizz and Infernal Shen. Next, of course, Pride is behind the corner, so expect new emotes and icons. And when it comes to skins, we are getting a bunch of Dragon Mancers and the Tournament of Souls skins. With the bonus being Viego getting a new battle boss skin on release. And because Wild Rift always gets the coolest exclusives, there is also Chrono Crash Corky and Gragas. But that is it for the news. Honestly, these are some amazing news for Wild Rift, which everyone wants to see in League PC. So expect a lot of hatred on the internet. What is also cool is that all of this seems to be a long term plan for Wild Rift. They said that they are doubling down on the lore and that they are planning to do more of things like these. So perhaps there will be more lore events in the future. And it is possible that the stories might link with each other. So now I just can't wait to see what event Wild Rift is gonna pick next. Because the story potential is going wild. And there might be a lot of new champions that get a lot of new looks as a result of this. I mean, look at Maokai. He still looks cool. But the Ruined King design might be better. 